A stabilized approach where you're maintaining a constant airspeed, descent angle, and configuration setting is key to a safe approach and landing. On a precision approach with vertical guidance from a glide slope like on an ILS, a stabilized approach comes from following the needles as closely as possible on a constant path to the runway. On a non-precision approach, there is no official vertical guidance, so maintaining a stable, continuous descent angle is a bit more complicated. On many non-precision approaches, this descent angle is published as the VDA, or Vertical Descent Angle. Here on the RNAV 14 in Weed, California, the VDA is 3.5 degrees. Following that descent angle from the final approach fix at 4,600 will cross the runway threshold at 40 feet. There's no vertical guidance on this approach from the GPS, even for WAS enabled units. The minimum section only lists LNAV, lateral navigation. But if we know our ground speed, we can figure out a descent rate that will keep us on this constant angle. For example, at 90 knots, we'll have about a 550 foot per minute descent to hold this steeper than usual 3.5 degree descent angle. On this approach, the MDA for our aircraft is going to be 3440. We arrive at the final approach fix, Kanki, begin a constant rate descent, arrive at the MDA, and level off. If we don't see the runway, we proceed to the missed approach point, zip zip, and go missed. Now, WAS enabled units can sometimes compute an advisory glide path on an approach with no vertical guidance, and this one is no exception. We intercept an advisory glide path here just as we would on a precision approach and fly it down. Now, instead of using our vertical speed indicator to hit a calculated descent angle, we're following the guidance. This feels like a precision approach, but when we get to the MDA, it's not the time to go missed. If we treat the MDA like a decision altitude, we arrive at 3440, decide to go missed, transition from a descent to a climb, and dip below MDA briefly as we do so. Now, on a precision approach with a decision altitude, this is perfectly fine but you can't go below the minimum descent altitude for any reason unless you're continuing the approach down to the runway. So how should we use the advisory glide path in our missed approach execution? The FAA defines something called a derived decision altitude. It provides guidance to commercial operators in advisory circular 120-108. Many commercial operators incorporate the derived decision altitude into their SOPs called op specs, and so make their use required but the FAA makes no such requirement for regular Part 91 GA flying. Still, we could take a page from the pros book and make our approaches more stable. A derived decision altitude adds a buffer onto the MDA. Between 30 and 50 feet should be sufficient. So let's make our derived decision altitude 3490 here. And so we'll fly it by intercepting the advisory glide path and going down to 3490. When we decide to go missed, we go full power, dipping below the derived decision altitude momentarily, but not below the minimum descent altitude, and then climb out. It's crucial to note that neither the arrival at the 3490 nor the climb out point happens at the missed approach point. This will always occur prior to the runway, and even in this case, prior to the missed approach point zigzag, which is 0.7 miles short of the runway. We're still required to fly the lateral course of the approach to zigzag even though we're allowed to initiate the climb out. Remember, the MDA is simply a minimum altitude. There's no reason we can't maintain flight above it while on the final approach segment. Note that there are some very rare approaches with maximum or mandatory altitudes on the mist, but in most cases, a climb out prior to the mist approach point isn't gonna cause any trouble. It's at ZigZib that we execute the mist approach procedure, which calls for an immediate left turn. If we had made the turn early, as soon as we arrived at the DDA, we wouldn't have the required obstacle protection of the missed approach segment, even if we've been climbing since deciding to go missed. If you're not on a published segment of the approach, and turning before zigzag takes us off the final approach segment, you're subject to the minimum safe altitude for the approach, which is 15,300. We're well below that, and that's for emergency use only anyways. So there's two courses of action with a derived decision altitude. Number one, we descend on the constant angle to the DDA. We gain the required visual references to continue the approach, proceed below MDA, and land, all using that same constant descent angle. Or we get to the DDA, don't have the required visual references, and execute a climb out, staying above the MDA. We stay on the approach course to the missed approach point, zigzag, then carry out the missed approach instructions. 
Whether you incorporate the derived decision altitude is really up to you. Some pilots prefer the so-called dive and drive technique, which has them making a purposely steeper than constant angle to the MDA, leveling off, then they'll hunt for the runway. This is a little easier to conceptualize. You simply stay at the same altitude and keep following the approach until reaching the missed approach point, then execute the climb out and any turns called for right away. There's no need to think through derived decision altitudes or when to climb versus turn, but it's inherently unstable and keeps you flying closer to the ground for longer, which is why a constant descent angle using a derived decision altitude might be better. Or you could keep the constant angle and forget the DDA, just level off and keep hunting. On a long enough runway, you can delay your descent to land a bit and still have plenty of pavement in front of you when you do gain sight of the runway and continue down below MDA. Your available runway landing distance is going to factor into this decision. Whatever you do, make it part of your own SOP and thoroughly brief it prior to flying. If you want a free resource to help you ace your instrument check ride, Flight Insight has a 15-page PDF guide that's linked here and in the description.